Okay, let's do question 51, um, which basically says that an urban planner claims that 20% of all families renting accommodation move during a year, and they take a random sample of 200 families renting accommodations. Uh, so basically, again, we know that there is a sample from a population. So we have a population. We have taken a sample. The sample is, they say, we took a sample of 200. And in that sample, 56 families moved, right? Mm -hmm. And the question is... So I read the question because the question is very important and that determines of our hypothesis that we have to write and then write the opposite of it. Uh, at 0 0.01 significance level, so alpha is 0 0.01, at 0 0.01 significance level, does this evidence suggest that a larger proportion of accommodation owners moved? larger than 20% that they expect. So the question is that can we claim that the proportion in the population that has moved is more than 20%? So is this, the question is that is the proportion that has moved more than 20%? Does this evidence suggest that a larger proportion than 20% moved? And they want us to answer this question based on the p-value instead of the critical regions. Okay, so we think to ourselves, like we will follow the same methodology. The one claim is that the proportion in the population is more than 0.2. The other claim is that the proportion in the population is less than or equal to 0.2 and uh, we consider the one that is that has equality to null hypothesis and the other one the alternative hypothesis we will accept this claim tentatively and everything that we write will be based on this tentative acceptance. Now, if this tentative acceptance leads to something consistent uh, with the observation, then we will uh, suspend our judgment, otherwise we will reject the norm, okay? So we think, what do we know about the distribution of sample p-bars from that population? We know that the distribution of sample proportions has a normal distribution. And we know that the standard deviation of sample proportions is square root of P multiplied by 1 minus P divided by N. So this is what we know from Central Limit Theorem. However, we don't know the proportion in the population. We accepted the null tentatively, and the null says that the proportion in the population are less than or equal to 0.2. So the, the critical point is 0.2. We accept that. We have already accepted that tentatively. So we will use the proportion of 0.2, and we will continue. So the mean of all of the sample proportions is 0.2 and the standard deviation would be 0.2 multiplied by 0.8 divided by 200. Was that 200? Okay. So this means that the standard deviation of variations of sample proportion is so let's go step by step. 0.2 multiplied by 0 0.8 is 0 0.16. 0 0.16 divided by 200 is how much? Oh, so two points, sorry? 0 0.8368. Okay, so we are about 2.8 standard deviations 
uh, far from the mean. Now, in the normal distribution table, we usually have this area. So please go to normal table and tell me how much is the, uh, the area between mean and 2.8 standard deviations from the, this area. What was the first number? Uh, 2.8. In normal distribution, z equal to 2.8. Uh, 2.83, two point eight four. Uh, four nine seven seven. So this area is point four nine seven seven. Therefore, this red area is how much? It would be point five minus point four nine seven seven. So the chance of this observation, uh, and uh, basically this is the z of our observation, the chance of this observation, and all of those things that are more significant that one, than that one combined is how much? 0.0023. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.0023. Okay? Yeah. So the chance of what you're observing is much less than 1%. So it is significant. Something happened that based on something happened that based on this claim based on this claim it shouldn't happen based on this claim this first of all the claim says that it should be less than 0.2 our observation is more than 0.2 and it is not a little bit more than 0.2 it is 2.8 uh, standard deviations more than 0.2 therefore this area has only a chance of 2 out of a thousand happening it is inconsistent with the null hypothesis that we accepted. Therefore, we reject the null. We reject the claim that the proportion is less than 0.2, and we accept the claim that the proportion in the population is more than 0.2. Oh, you reject the... the yeah, because, because what, what happened is that we took a sample, and our sample is, first of all, inconsistent with this. It says less than 0.2, we got more than 0.2. Okay. And then it's not a little bit more than 0.2, it's a lot more than 0.2. The chance of this happening, and all of those things that are more significant than 0.28 happening combined all together is two out of a thousand. So basically we go to this guy and say, we accepted your claim. Based on your claim, what happened in our sample shouldn't happen. The ch based on your claim, um, if we, try 1,000 times, two times out of 1,000.28 uh, should happen. But it happened right away, and the chance of it happening is less than 1% based on your claim, so you don't have a good hypothesis. This hypothesis is nullable, and we reject it. Okay. Any questions? What I don't understand is that the chance is so little, but why do we not accept it? The chance is so little of that happening. Isn't the chance it? of what happening? The chance of uh, this happened more than two. This happened. But it's very rare. It's like it's zero, zero. If this claim is, if this claim is accepted, if we accept point two, should this happen? It shouldn't. Shouldn't happen. No. We know that it happened. So, if so do you think that the reality is wrong, that it happened, or this claim that the guy made is wrong? Okay, but you have two options. You either deny the reality of your sample, or you deny this claim. Because based on this claim, this shouldn't happen. So if that's the point that we're making, why did you even bother by, why did you want to know what's the percentage? that it's possible. This, this? Yeah. No, it, Why did you have to do that then? We want to know if this, what happened to us, is consistent with the null or it is inconsistent with the null. Okay, so you got 0.28, so it is incus un incus inconsistent. So if it was 21, was it, it was also inconsistent. Yeah, so you could say no, no right away. No, 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 down. because if it is 21 to 0 0.21, then this guy says this is by accident. But now you're saying that this 
is something that by accident shouldn't happen. The chance that this happens by accident is two out of a thousand. Yeah, but if it was, if it was 21, it wasn't low. If we would get 21 here, the chance would be 40%. Okay? If I get a sample and my sample is 0.21, mm -hmm. what is the chance of that happening based on this claim? Okay, if, I ch if I say that the average in this class is 77 mm -hmm. and you get 78, are you surprised? So if this says, the guy says the average is 0.2 and we get 21, are you surprised? No. Okay. So that is not surprising. Not everything is surprising. Those things that have little chance of happening is surprising. I tell you the average is 77 and in the exam you get 10%. Are you surprised? Mm -hmm. Because 10% is very far from your expectation. So we have to know if this point is strange or not. Just because it is different than claim doesn't enable us to reject. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I repeat my question. If we get an average of, uh, if the proportion in the sample is 21, is it consistent with the norm? No. No, it is not consistent, no. but it's not that different because it has 40% chance of happening. However, 0.28, is it consistent with the norm? No. Its chance is one out of a thousand. So this enables us to reject the norm.